Welcome back to Dylan Talks Tone. This is Dylan from Dylan Pickups, and this is the podcast where we talk about guitar tone, everything to do with your your sound, from the pick, through the strings, the guitar, all the way through the amp and out the speaker, the air in the room, everything to do with guitar tone. This is what we talk about on Dylan Talks Tone. So tonight, uh, this was kind of inspired by a couple of things, a question that came in from a viewer, and then also the fact that the other day, because of the weather, I had to uh, turn my air on in my house because here in South Carolina, it's getting a little bit warmer and uh, the seasons are changing. And, you know, of course, we have I have a billion guitars and um, that means that I got to go through them and start checking some stuff. So I thought, well, let's talk about guitar setup, because it's getting to be that time of year where depending on where you live and how you store your guitars and that sort of thing, uh, you might have to spend some time doing some setup to keep them them playing well. So we're going to talk briefly about a couple of things. One, we want to talk about the optimal, more or less conditions for your guitar. And that would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 55 percent humidity. Now, the reason we bring up the humidity is because the wood in your guitar is going to expand and contract directly related to how much moisture is in the air. OK, and two things and they're both our houses are subject to both of them. So in the wintertime, uh, there's two things that, that hurt them. One is in the wintertime is forced air heat. Most of us have a forced air furnace of some sort and we blow air around our house to heat our heat our house up and that dries out the air quite a bit. The other thing is because, like, for instance, we live in the southeast of the United States and it gets really hot here so we have air we have air conditioning and the air conditioning can also if it's not properly regulated can uh, dry out your guitar too well what's that going to do well if we have dry conditions something that then that's probably more so the possibility than overly humidifying an electric guitar now acoustic guitars it's another story because uh, the tops can swell, they can belly, they can do all kinds of things. But just with electric guitars, we're going to talk about probably dry air is the number one thing that causes uh, a problem. And it's the thing that causes a problem most of the time for many players and builders and, and guys that, that are trying to adjust their, their guitars. So there's a few things that happen, mainly to do with wood shrinkage. So when it gets dry, the wood actually shrinks. Things that don't shrink are things like frets. So if you ever pick up your guitar uh, in the springtime or in the fall, especially because of the season change and you uh, pick up your guitar and the frets are kind of scratchy on the ends, if you run your hand up and down the side of the neck, um, that's because the humidity in your house is probably very, very low and uh, the thing's starting to dry out a bit. Uh, the other thing that can happen is because of that shrinkage is the neck relief can change and this is something that i always like to mention when you leave a guitar in the closet okay there are no settings on your setup of your guitar that change without you doing it nothing nothing moves by itself except for the neck relief okay because everything else is a mechanical adjustment so string height and intonation, all that stuff. That's all mechanical adjustments that you do with tools and you do as a person, okay? But the only thing that moves without you moving it is the neck relief in the guitar. So how do we set our neck relief? Um, we'll just go through this real briefly. You can actually go to uh, Dylan Pickup's uh, YouTube channel and there is a five or six part video series. I think it's five part video series that goes through setup, okay? So first of all, set your neck relief. And this, this sort of thing, uh, somebody asked me today on Facebook, how do you get a guitar play really, really low action and really, really perfect? Um, well, that's kind of a relative term because some people um, do not like really, really low action and some people don't like a really, really flat neck. The guitar neck, the fretboard, cannot be 100% flat because the strings have to move in a semi-arch sort of way and because of just how they move. So there has to be room for that string to go up and down. So you gotta have a little bit of relief in that neck, meaning it has to be bent a little bit 
to allow that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, that's a, that's a, that's a thing. Okay. They really, really need to have a little bit of relief. Now I'm going to use a Fender Telecaster as a baseline for our discussions tonight. Uh, at the center point of the neck, uh, between the, you know, the middle of the last fret and the first fret, uh, typically it's about 10 thousandths that you start with. And if your fret job is really, really good and really, really, the, the, the thing is really, really flat, you can lower that down to say five thousandths, but typically 10 thousandths is where you're going to be. Okay. With your neck relief. Um, and look on your guitar, um, for the actual factory specs for that. And then also look uh, on to your guitar's manual for how to adjust your uh, truss rod to get that neck relief in there. Um, that's going to move probably more than anything because of the weather. Um, and that's a thing, depending on the construction of the guitar and the construction of um, depending on the, the construction of the guitar and how the neck is attached and that sort of thing is going to depend on how much it moves. The other thing too is many, many, uh, there are many different kinds of woods that necks are made out of and some woods are more stable than others. And, uh, it's been my experience that with mahogany necks, for instance, if you move them, if you adjust the truss rod, you might have to give it a little time for it to settle into its new place because you can actually overcompensate or over move that neck and it'll kind of go too far the other way, if that makes sense. Maple is less prone to do that because it's a lot harder um, and the grain of the wood is a lot tighter. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more stable. So you move it a little and it moves a little. Um, but mahogany necks, like for instance, on a Les Paul or an SG or something like that, um, they will like to move a little bit more depending on how the weather is and the temperature and that sort of thing. Um, but if you can keep your guitars within 45 to 55% humidity and a reasonable temperature in your house, that'll, that'll make it a whole lot easier. Uh, once you set your neck relief, uh, then I would, if it was me, I would go on to uh, string height at the 12th fret. And this is basically preference on a Telecaster, for instance, uh, most people say two millimeters. I think that's a touch high if you can get away with 175 or so that's plays a little bit better um and uh you do that with moving your saddles up and down now here's some an important point to remember for those of you that have not done a lot of guitar setup the neck relief is not what you use to adjust the height of the string off of the neck neck relief is only uh to be set once and then the um, string height is used, uh, is set with the saddles in the bridge. The other thing that kind of interacts with that is the nut height. But if we've not replaced the nut, if we're not building a new guitar from scratch, then we usually don't have to mess with the nut unless it's really, really worn. So set your string height and then set your intonation last, because if you set your intonation before this, then your string height's going to mess it up. So set your string height. One more note about string height. I, the way I personally set string height is I like to have um, uh, my string height about 175 on the high E and closer to two millimeters on the low E just because of the way I play. If you play really hard with your pick, you're going to want those low strings to have a little bit more room to move around. Okay. So this means that your neck relief might be a little higher, closer to the 10 thousandths range when we set that. And they might be a little higher uh, at the string height closer to two millimeters, or maybe even a little more, depending on your string gauge and your scale length and how hard you play the guitar. Um, this is not a science. This is more uh, a really a, a how you play the guitar. If you're very light touch and you don't strum really hard, then you can get away with a lot tighter tolerances. Those numbers are really only meant for a baseline to give the strings enough room to move around. And if you can get it a little bit lower because you like it lower, then you're not going to hurt anything by doing that. Um, the intonation then uh, would be done last. I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of details about how to set intonation. The reason for this is uh, we have a bunch of videos actually on our YouTube channel at Dylan Pickups, uh, youtube.com slash Dylan Pickups, where we talk about intonation. Uh, there are very many different kinds of bridges. 
Um, uh, the old traditional tele bridge, a lot of times is purported to be very difficult to set. I have no problem with it whatsoever. If you want to go watch my videos on that, about how I do it, uh, you can do that. And, uh, I don't have any problem with it. I, I think they're fine. Um, so <clears throat> this is definitely, uh, the last thing that you want to do. And then actually it's not another question we had came up on the internet the other day was about pickup height because your pickup height is gonna be basically the very last thing that you do. So this gets a little bit into the electronics of the guitar, um, but honestly, it really comes down to preference. The kind of the old standard way to set pickup height is, um, what do you do? Fret the last note on the low E and the high E, and then you just give it a little bit of room from um, the highest point of the pickup so the string doesn't hit, so like a, what do they say? two millimeters or um, like a couple of, like a nickel, you know? Um, and then set your bridge pickup so that the tone matches how you want. I personally like to have the tone of the neck pickup and the bridge pickup very, very even. I like them to be completely even because I like my middle position on my guitar to sound a certain way and that requires the height the, the tone of the pickups to be very, very even. A lot of guys like to have uh, the bridge pickup a lot more pronounced. So when they whack it over to the bridge position and they play a solo, for instance, um, they want it to be a lot more powerful. So set the neck first and then set that bridge position. And then you might have to wash them back and forth just a little bit depending on how much room you have and the type of pickup mounting you have and such. Personally, um, I don't do that. I like to have them completely equal because actually I play my solos a lot on the neck pickup. So, uh, and when you look at my neck pickup designs and you understand how I actually build pickups, you'll see, I really, really favor the neck pickup when it comes to that. Um, there is kind of an optimal way to set your, your pickup height and it has a lot to do with, and, and this is really going to get super technical, but um, the magnetic bloom of the pickup is different depending on what kind of magnet that you have. And if you could see that magnetic bloom, what you would want to do is have that pickup, that string, just outside of the strongest point of that magnetic field so that you don't have magnet pull problems. Uh, because mathematically, we also have a video on this on our Dylan Pickups YouTube channel, mathematically, magnet pull on a properly set up guitar is not a thing. It's bogus, okay? So, and you can watch our videos on that, and I, there, I have tons and tons of actual math, like science and stuff, on that video um, that discusses why it's totally bogus that a, uh, that a string can be pulled by a properly set up pickup on a guitar, okay? If you set it up improperly, you can have problems, but if you set it up correctly, you won't. And what you really want to worry about is if you have a strong magnet, like a ceramic eight humbucker, for instance, uh, that you do give it a little bit of distance, but we're really not talking about anything more um, than the specifics that we just discussed. So um, let's say a nickel with the string fretted at the last fret and then adjust for tone and you will not have a problem with magnet pull. If somebody tells you that, it's because they don't understand the math. So that is pickup height. That's basically setup. You know, there's a lot more that goes into it. You got to remember that everything kind of interacts with one another. Um, but if you watch those five videos on our YouTube channel at Dylan Pickups, you'll really be able to see kind of how it all interacts. And we go into a lot more detail with a lot of this stuff that I don't have time to do tonight because we do have a time limit on how, uh, on our live video portion for our, our FAQ. So, um, but that's the thing, man. Uh, it is a season change. Just go back, pull all your guitars. It gives you an excuse to play around for an afternoon. What I do, I throw some Netflix on or whatever, and I just kind of plunk around on all my guitars and I see which ones need adjusting and I just, you know, watch a movie and tinker around for a couple hours and uh, have guitars laying all over the living room and get them all tweaked back and then you'll be fine until the weather changes again in the fall and you'll have to do it again. And, uh, you know, but that's the fun of doing all of this. So my name is Dylan. 
This is Dylan Pickups. This is Dylan Talks Tone Podcast. If you have any questions, you want to contribute anything for next week's episode, feel free to do so at dylanpickups.com or at our YouTube channel at Dylan Pickups. Please check out this podcast at dylantalkstone.com and subscribe because we do this live every week and we want you to be part of our community. Please also check out guitartechgroup.com guitartechgroup.com and become part of our Facebook uh, community that we talk about guitars. This is not a group where we decide what color pickguard we want. This is real technical stuff about guitar building and guitar setup and tone. Guitartechgroup.com. You'll if you go there, it'll shoot you a link and you'll be able to figure out how to be part of that group. Thanks a lot. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. I hope you all have a great night.